particular debate. I'm looking for new material and new argument. I call Simeon Brown. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'd like to speak to my supplementary order paper, uh, which is in relation to Clause 12 of the Employment Relations Amendment Bill. And this supplementary order paper seeks to amend uh, by deleting Clause 12 of the Bill. The clause as it currently stands allows union representatives to initiate bargaining 20 days earlier than an employer. This will lead to a potential confusion as to what advantage is conferred by early initiation, which may detract from an efficient bargaining process. In our view, good bargaining, faith bargaining requires all claims be considered and responded to before bargaining can reasonably be considered complete. And I understand uh, the Minister took a very short call in relation to this issue uh, earlier and essentially um, said that he wants to bring some sort of order to the process. And my question to the Minister is to, and I, 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 I appreciate the interjection from, from Maya Lubick on the other side, but I'm trying to ask a question of the Minister in relation to Clause 12, which is around what is the, what is the, what is the, issue, what is the issue which is being raised here in relation to the ordering of the current, currently where both parties can initiate these. He sort of alluded to some sort of rushed process whereby people try to put the, uh, go to collective uh, negotiation first, at, or both at the same time. And I'd like to know from the Minister what evidence he had which shows that that is of some concern or whether that is leading to bad outcomes in the collective negotiating process, whether that's actually leading to employers and unions not uh, concluding uh, bargain, bargains or collective agreements which are actually of a, a conducive nature to a good employer-employee relationship. Because I think what this section now does, Clause 12 does, is it pits employers against unions. Uh, it gives an advantage to one over the other. And I, I was just reading through the, uh, the departmental report uh, which which we asked this exact question in the select committee, and the, and the response was from officials, and I assume the minister stands by this, uh, is that the amendment is intended to allow unions to set the agenda by bargaining by initiating, of bargaining by initiating first in order to address the inherent imbalance of power in employment relationships. And I challenge uh, that statement there because I think of the employers in my electorate uh, many of whom are very small, many of whom are not large employers. Most of them would be, uh, well, many of them in retail or in, uh, in light industry, small industry, uh, marina-based uh, marine based employers uh, in, in the Half Moon Bay uh, Marina, um, at, or, or, and predominantly uh, then service-based, whether that's through uh, the, the, sh the sort of shopping centre-based uh, uh, sort of industry. So, I ask the question, why is this uh, pitched in New Zealand in a way which is sort of trying to make it out that these employers are all big employers who are needing to be uh, brought to task uh, or brought to bear to the power of the union? Why do we need to lead to a situation where our unions are trying to address the power imbalance where clearly the vast majority of our businesses are small businesses, they don't employ a lot of people, and we're essentially saying that a union can come along and has a 20-day advantage over the employer, over the business, and that uh, will, I think, lead to a breakdown, a, a breakdown, and a breakdown in relations, rather than uh, rather than actually conducive towards actually bringing employers and employees together to try and actually lead to good outcomes here. Uh, for, for the betterment of New Zealand. And I, I do agree with uh, my colleague Andrew Bailey that there is a place uh, for unions to negotiate these bargains, but there's also uh, needs to be recognition of the fact that employers ultimately provide jobs. They are the ones who actually provide jobs for, for workers, and they are the ones who pay the wages, and they are the ones who have to actually create the wealth so that people can actually have a job and earn an income and have a livelihood. And yes, there can be bad employers, uh, but so we also need to ensure that we're not leading to a situation where there is a breakdown in relationships between those employers 
and the unions which, uh, which they work with. And many, and, many, and many employers would say to me, yep, generally we have a good relationship, uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Madam Chair. I call the Honourable Nikki Wagner. Madam Chair, um, I would like to speak to...